So today we are making biofurts. We've been applying liquid slurries to our crops, but now it's time to make a big batch of this. We have also got a big batch of compost tea that's going on over the beds. So we're diluting this down to give us enough volume now to get over all the beds. And the little biofurts that we already have is going on our trial beds. So we're making 180 litre drum and the ingredients can vary but what we like to put in is 40 litres of cow manure for nitrogen and bacteria one litre of fresh milk that's sugars for bacteria two litres of sugarcane molasses that's full of trace minerals and sugars for bacteria we're putting in some of the ash from the fire that's got different minerals in and rock dust we have here Sears rock dust it's a volcanic rock dust and it is used for Lots of minerals, it's wonderful stuff. You can read about that on their website. Then we're putting in humic acids, which is more food. And dried yeast is used just to expel the air. So this is an anaerobic fermentation. We need a plastic bottle and an airlock because we need to allow carbon dioxide and methane out and no oxygen in. And then we're putting a bit of bone and blood meal in just for extra nutrients. So it's got to have an airlock, which is something we need to work on out of bits of old plumbing. Kristen's found some pieces from a box of old plumbing. Essentially we've got a bung that's got a rubber flange so we can push that up from the inside and put a sort of hose attachment on the outside and as long as we drill the right size hole that will give us an airlock and we will have an anaerobic digestion. This is a dead beetle. So awesome with mushrooms popping out of it. <laughs> Just, what a you crazy might wanna, thing. You might want to edit. If we it. cut this open, you might find mycelium, mycelium running for it. Fluorine-free water is very essential. Fluorine-free water. Now, obviously you could scale this recipe down to like that little drum, which has got 20 liters of manure and stuff in. Like you can scale that how you like. You could do this in an IBC, obviously, with a thousand liters. And you could do this in an Olympic swimming pool also. You know, like the recipe is the same. So critical points, let's start the critical points. So the cow manure is critical. That's a nitrogen source and a bacteria source. So, so your recipe should always have cow manure at that ratio. Fresh milk is good. This should be raw milk, but that's sugar and bacteria. So we've said a few times, right? But you, anything you put in your soil process through biology first. This is anaerobic, so it automatically produces uh, plant toxins but they're all all air soluble so when we water it, it they're volatizing in the air it's very different to having an anaerobic compost where the whole material is anaerobic it's not the same right this is using anaerobic bacteria to mimic a cow's gut and digestion process but then any of the toxins are soluble so we want fresh milk for feeding bacteria with sugar if it was raw milk it would have even more bacteria in it that's been mixed in already into here so Dominique made up the molasses and uh, rock dust and no we haven't done rock dust yet done milk. molasses that's essential and you don't want too much so this is minerals and sugar and sugar cane is better than sugar beet, but if you can only get sugar beet, that'll do. So if you put too much of the sugars, you can get ethanol and things like that. So you don't want that. So that's an important one to keep in ratio here. So if you want to make an IBC, you just divide a thousand by 180 and times it, and you've got your recipe there. The sauna ash, that doesn't matter. That's trace minerals. That one you can... Add or leave at your own desire. I often don't put ash in. Rock dust, I definitely want to put in. And that's phosphoric rock. So that's phosphorus and minerals. 
Now, we are using this product from Sears. And we don't have so much left, but you can see this is volcanic rock left. This is from Sears in Scotland. Natural volcanic minerals and trace elements to boost soil and compost fertility. And it says on it, from soil and compost remineralization. Sears rock dust is 420 million year old volcanic rock, finely crushed to release a wide range of minerals and trace elements. To boost fertility in the organic soils and compost for higher yields, healthier fruit, vegetables, flowers, trees, lush lawns and pastures, as demonstrated at the Sears Centre. You can look up their website, they have like massive broccoli heads and all kinds of... So you can use it as an annual uh, top dressing <coughs> on your soil. And you can use it up to 5 kilos a square meter. And that gives a big boost. That's, a, that's the maximum dose. Rock dust is not an instant fix. It may take several months to improve microbiological activity and soil fertility. But rock dust can help improve overall yield, flavor and aroma, nutritional value, pest resistance, worm population, health and vigor, flower quality, shelf life, disease resistance, drought resistance. And in compost, it can improve microbial activity, nitrogen fixing, odor reduction, temperature, composting speed and fertility. And then the environmental benefits of rock dust, which you must take into account, they have a whole mining industry to get it out. It improves the soil's ability to absorb and utilize CO2, but they probably use more CO2 getting it out than it absorbs, so, you know. <laughs> Reduces dependency on synthetic fertilizers, boosts nitrogen fixing bacteria, increases microbial activity and biodiversity. So it works well with all soil conditioners, animal manures and plant foods, and adding lime is not recommended. And they sell it in one ton bag. So that's rock best. We want three kilos of that. So that's giving us a big source of phosphorus. That's important. Then 250 ml of humic acid. So that could be like, you know, a yogurt pot of worm castings from your worm bin. We've used that product that we put in the compost tea because that's all we have. So you want humic acid. Dried yeast you need. That's here just warming up to get it activated and that's what will push the initial air out to make it anaerobic straight away so we're just putting this in last to how, get how, much, how much dry juice is that doesn't matter just like a packet you know does it need to be dry juice no it could be fresh juice we're just using that just to expel air straight away and then these anaerobes that are in all the mixture are going to get going you need an airlock, obviously. Bone meal and blood meal, they're not essential. We're just adding them as nutrients. So you can, it's up to you what you uh, want to add additionally. You could add, you know, a lot of humic acid. You could add uh, a lot of fish meal, bone, you know, you could add anything that you want to have. If you needed magnesium in your soils and you wanted to put magnesium in there you could add you know anything you want to add specifically you could chuck it through here so it gets processed by biology first uh, the dried that yeast. would be a pretty standard recipe and it's the correct ratio so you want to follow that ratio however you scale it and you can add like these things should all be in it but you can add to that and the only thing that's to be considerate of is humic acids that's a product we've bought but you can just use worm castings or worm juice like, you know, if you have a worm bin or someone you know has a worm bin, just a bit of juice, that's fine. You don't need to go and buy anything, essentially. That's one of the, you know, all these things we're doing, they're all things you can do with stuff lying around. You know, you can find a blue barrel, you can find some way to make an airlock. Molasses you can buy anywhere in the world. Milk you can find, cow manure you can find. But it's specifically cow manure. It's not horse manure or chicken manure. It's specifically cow manure because it's a mimic of what's going on in a cow, kind of. A little funny cow. So the dried yeast is one packet? Yeah, or Sorry two packets, I... whatever. I think we had two just because we had two joined together. It doesn't matter. It's, okay, it's, it's just, it's just a you... small amount that's producing CO2, and that's expelling the oxygen. 
And this will start bubbling pretty soon. Like we want to hear this farthing. It's a cold day, it's not so warm, so it will take a while because we're filling it with water at like four degrees or something. But if it's sitting out in 20 degrees, it will start regularly farting. And it will be farting methane just like a cow. Methane and carbon dioxide just yeah. like a cow. All anaerobic digestions, methane, carbon dioxide. Mm. Come here, and it does it have to be organic, or can this process? Uh, it shouldn't be full of anything that kills microbes. Mm. So if you fill cows with things that kill microbes, then it won't work so well. Yeah. But by default, what we're talking about is organic. Like we're talking about farming. Yeah. So milk. To molasses, ideally you'd use raw milk, we just don't have any right now, but milk is full of sugars, just lacking some of the bacteria. And then we're mixing everything else that's going in here into the milk and molasses, except the bread yeast. We'll put that in warm water and put that in last just to expel the oxygen. So it's a big old chemistry experiment, but this is a wonderful MPK replacement that is uh, a biostimulant. It's, it's giving M, P, and K in homeopathic doses, and you can see by the amounts. You know, this is typically diluted one to ten after a one-month fermentation, and so and then applied all over the plants, under the leaves, all over the leaves and the uh, ground, and it does give M, P, and K from the materials we're putting in, but at homeopathic doses, you could say, and it's it's acting as a biostimulant and growth hormones and putting nutrient down that's been synthesized by biology and that's the key to all of our soil preps is we're using biology to put nutrients in the format that plants evolved to take them up by their own choice so this is another arm in our strategy to rectify our fertility problems that we've been talking about bone meal with phosphorus and other nutrients and calcium and then we've got blood meal here which is obviously full of nitrogen 40 litres of the freshest. Look at this, beautiful. But this is leaking, so we've identified that we potentially need to get rid of this little uh, flak on the edge. This must be airtight, otherwise it won't be anaerobic. <laughs> we think this is airtight, but we're not totally sure. So we're going to test it. Going in. <laughs> and then we're filling this up. We've got to leave a little bit of an air gap right so now. that this doesn't bubble up outside of the uh, airlock. And so we're putting 40 liters very fresh manure. This is full of nitrogen and bacteria. And we'll start filling it and mixing it as we add the other ingredients here at the correct ratio. Birthdays for Ed's. Awesome. Birthdays mean cakes. Look at this little beauty. What do you call it? Special chefs, chefs and chefs. What do you call a cake? What should it be? Swedish mystery cake. Swedish mystery cake cake, yeah. So, Ed's going out. We've got Micros, Mitsuna, Scarlet Frills, Mastin Mix, plus the spring onions and herbs. And then we've got some nice salad heads going off to restaurants. First eggs. Eggs are becoming regular. Our favourite eggs are really amazing eggs. We've got eggs, chickens, salads, all kinds of stuff going out today. Very nice. New delivery van. Working good. Johanna's going so I can get out and go and pick up Ragnar. So, Ragnar's here. And that's the end of the video. I just wanted to share a bit about making biofurts. It's a great MPK replacer, you could call it, even though it's not a direct replacement. It's basically a plant stimulant that's causing plants to photosynthesize at a faster rate, put out more sugars and proteins into the ground, and subsequently have the soil microbiology release more food for the plant. So it's a great thing you can make at home at different scales to suit your needs, and it stores forever once it's finished. So you can keep that and have it for your garden for the entire year. So it's a nice thing to do. All of the soil preps we're doing this week as part of the internship, all things that you can do with stuff lying around on a typical farm, 
making compost teas, biofurts, biochar, etc. So we've just been having a, a bit of a hands-on week learning how to make all of these preparations for helping support building healthy soil and soil ecosystems. Hope you enjoyed the video folks and we'll see you very soon in another video. Bye for now. Thank you.